hands together and send your prayers away. Whisper your utmost love to Allah and ask Him what you may. Gather your hands together and send your prayers away. الذي نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله أرسله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا ثم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار يقول سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد نقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ووفيت كل نفس ما عملت وهو أعلم بما يفعلون وسيق الذين كفروا إلى جهنم زمرا حتى إذا جاءوها فتحت أبوابها وقال لهم خزنتها ألم يأتكم رسل منكم يتلون عليكم آيات ربكم وينذرونكم لقاء يومكم هذا قالوا بلى 
ولكن حقت كلمة العذاب على الكافرين وبشحني صدري ويسر لي أمري وحد العقبة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا إله إلا الله اللهم اجعلنا من الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر أمين يا رب العالمين I have a challenge in this khutbah today in these few minutes that I have with you I want to share with you a small bit of reflection from the end of Surah Al-Zumar hopefully go through as much of that last passage of Surah Al-Zumar as I possibly can but before I do I need you to remember two things from the surah right before Surah Al-Zumar, Surah Sa'd it is my conviction among many scholars that believe that the Qur'an's order, the surahs, the sequence of the surahs in the Qur'an is not just a result of the ijma', the consensus of the companions, but it's actually from the hikmah of Allah Azza wa Jal also, that Allah Azza wa Jal allowed for the surahs to be in this particular order. And there are lessons that Allah teaches in one surah, and He leaves the lesson incomplete, or leaves a question in the mind of the student, and answers the question in the coming surah. And He does this on multiple occasions. So there are two things I want you to remember, hopefully not more than two, from Surah Sa'd. And in the beginning of this khutbah, it might seem like both of those things are unrelated, but hopefully through surat, a, a brief study of Surah Al-Zumar, or at least at the end of Surah Al-Zumar, we can address both of those questions, inshallah ta'ala. Actually, one of them is a question, and the other is not a question at all. One thing I want you to learn today about Jannah, about paradise, about the promise of salvation that may Allah all of us allow us to enter, is a very <coughs> brief description given at the end of Surah Sa'd that's remarkable. Allah Azza wa Jal says, هَذَا ذِكْرٌ وَإِنَّ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ لَحُسْنَ مَآبٍ This is the first part of the description of paradise. All of this, he talked about a number of prophets and talked about how all of them were concerned with the Akhirah and then he turns to us and said, this is all a reminder. And for those people that have taqwa, may Allah make us from them, they're going to have the, the, the best possible, and I won't translate this word yet, the best possible ma'ab. Ma'ab is a dharf in the Arabic language, it comes from the verb aba, which they say, shay'un aba yani raja'a ila makanihi, ila al asl. Aba means something that goes back to its origin, it goes back where it started. So, for instance, you know, when you, when you return somewhere, it may be that it's not your original place. Like if I return back to the hotel that I'm staying at, that's not really Aba. It's really Raja. I go back to the hotel, but that's not my original place. Once I go back to Texas, now that's Aba. But my real Ma'ab is going to be when I go to the, uh, to, uh, at the end, and Allah Azza wa Jal refers to Jannah as Ma'ab. And there's a reason for that. Because humanity began there. And the real place to go back to is where all of this began. The creation of the human being, Adam alayhi salam, of whom all of us are children, his original housing housing is Jannah. And so Allah calls it Husna Ma'ab, the best possible place to go back to. Not a new place for you and me, but actually our original home. And you know there's something about, about your original home. There, there are a few things that you have to appreciate about your home. There are no formalities in your own home. When you go to somebody else's home, there are formalities. But when you go into your own home, there are no formalities. There are no restrictions. So look at the description as Allah continues. And again, my khutbah today is not about Surah Sa'd, but at least a couple of things I want you to know about Jannah before we touch to the Zumar. <laughs> Allah Azza wa Jal says, Jannati Adlin, Mufattahatan Nahumul Abwa. Gardens of Adl. And describing the gardens of Adl, they say gardens of Eden in English, Mufattaha. Very remarkable word. The hal of the Jannat, the state in which the gardens are, and the, the doors that they have, you all heard about the gates of Jannah, that it has multiple gates. Allah says the gates of Jannah are being held open constantly. Maftuh bil lughat arabiyya, open. Somebody holding something open. Mufattaha, somebody holding something open for a very, very, very long time. It is as though Allah is hinting. That from the day the humanity left Jannah, the doors of it were never closed. They are being held open. You know, in, when, a, when a, a, a mother sees her son go, and she really wants the son to come back, she doesn't even lock the door. She leaves it open. That's just not locking the door. Forget closing the door. The doors are being held open. And Mufattaha, this ism of in the Arabic language suggests 
the existence of a what's called, you know, uh, the technical terminology that's used. Basically what that means is someone is holding it open, we're not going to tell you who. The suggestion here is there are loads of angels that are actually holding the gates of Jannah open. Their only job is to hold the gates of Jannah open so one day you and I can walk through. What a mercy of Allah Azza wa Allah mentions no such thing for Jahannam by the way. He mentions no such thing for Jahannam. He only mentions it for Jannah. That the gates of Jannah are being held open. That's the first thing I want you to know. The second thing I want you to know from again Surah Sa'd is something very interesting. It's the only time mentioned in the Quran really. Allah Azza wa Jal's Messenger وسلم, is commanded to let people of shirk, people of kufr know that he only has the knowledge that Allah has taught him. And there are some things that even he has no access to. There are some aspects of knowledge that even Rasulullah has no way of knowing. And one of them, he says, Allah Azza wa tells him to say, Qul. Uh, actually, let me, let me find the ayah. It's, it's actually very powerful. Allah Azza wa says, I don't, ma kana li min ilm. I don't have any knowledge about bil mala il a'la, of the highest angels. The hi By the way, the mala, the word mala is important here. Mala comes from the Arabic word, or verb mala, which means to fill. You know, kings, when they're generals and they're ministers and they're courtiers, they fill his court. He's not the only one sitting on the throne, the most important people are around him. Nowadays in the presidency or the prime minister has its most important cabinet ministers sitting around him. They fill the room, they're called the mala. So Allah Azza wa Jal on his throne and the highest ranked angels around him. And these highest ranked angels among them, Jibreel alayhi salam, they're actually having a debate, a discussion. They're engaged in, you know, when they're arguing with each other. We, had, we never knew that angels even have arguments. We had no idea. Even the Messenger وسلم, is told, I don't know what the arguments are about. I didn't even know about the highest level arguments. So Allah commands him to tell humanity, I, you know, you have no way of knowing this. I have no way of knowing this, the Messenger himself. So two things, and they seem unrelated. One, the gates of Jannah are being held open. Two, there's an argument going on within the angels. They're debating something. Now, before you get confused, let me just add a couple of you know, disclaimers. Angels are creatures of Allah that don't disobey Him. They don't disobey Allah. But that does not mean they don't possess intellect. That does not mean they don't ask questions. That does not mean they don't disagree with each other. They actually have discussions among each other. And one such discussion and question, and, you know, even curiosity is even recorded in the Quran. It has to do with the human beings. When the human being was created, angels had a question. You know, You're going to put on the earth somebody who's going to spill blood, who's going to kill, who's going to murder who's going to commit crime, he's going to cause all kinds of corruption. Well, we're already there to do this. What's the point of creating this human being that clearly has some pretty bad potential? He's got some good qualities, but he's got some pretty bad qualities too. He's got some potential to do a lot of evil. They didn't understand. They absolutely obey Allah. And when Allah Azza wa commanded them to do such that, they did even though they had that question. They had that question, but they didn't, they didn't question Allah Azza wa and they made such that anyway. But the point I'm trying to make is, if there is any record in the Qur'an of the angels having a discussion, it's about the human beings. They have ikhtilaf about where we stand. We don't know what those ikhtilafat are. Maybe the, the angels are having an argument, who's going to go through which gate of Jannah? Maybe they're having an argument, is this one really going to the highest level or is he going level underneath that? Oh, I think he's going pretty high. Is that one going to come to, come to Islam? He seems like he has so much potential, but he still hasn't turned back to Allah yet. I think he's got potential. You know how you guys discuss sports? That team, I don't know, Manchester United, I don't know. You know, they're having conversations about each other. Well, the angels are having conversations about us. And sometimes they have different opinions. Like people get really passionate about the team they support, right? This one's going to come, you watch next year, watch. You know? We don't know. But they're having an argument regardless. Two things. The gates of Jannah are being held open, and angels have some kind of argument that, or discussion that we have no access to. We really just don't know. All we know is it might be about us. It might be about ourselves. Now let's turn to the passage I really want to talk to you about. 
This is the end of Surah Al-Zumr. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَوُفِّيَتْ كُلُّ نَفْسًا عَمِلًا Every single person will be paid in full, given in full, whatever he or she did. And I'll add the word, whatever he or she did, consciously. The word amal is used. The word amal is used. The word amal is different from the word fi'l. Me speaking to you right now, consciously, is a amal. But me breathing is a fi'l. When I go to sleep, my body moves. My hands move. I turn from this side to that side. But I have no idea what I'm doing. That's not an amal, that is a fi'l. Fi'l is all kinds of actions, conscious or unconscious. When you're walking, you don't literally look at your leg and say, come on, right leg, time for the next step. You don't do that, it just automatically happens. That's a fi'l, that's not a amal. Amal is when you consciously, thoughtfully do something. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, every person will be given full compensation of whatever they did, but He adds, whatever they did consciously. Allah's mercy in the ayah is that He did not say, وَوُفِّيَتْ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا فَعَلَتْ he didn't say that. If Allah said that, then we would have to be responsible for our conscious deeds and our subconscious deeds. We would have been responsible for what we mean and what we don't mean. The mistakes we made on purpose and the mistakes that happened, we didn't even realize they were mistakes. All of them. All of them we would, be, we would have to answer for. And look, Allah Azza wa Jal makes it clear that He knows the difference between amal and fi'l. So He says, He ends the ayah, He says, وَهُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا يَفْعَلُونَ Say Maya. He says he knows better everything that they do. He knows all of their af'al, but he will only pay them for their a'mal. SubhanAllah. That's the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. That he selects from our deeds. And look, how many mistakes we make subconsciously. I mean, there's enough of them that we make consciously. But if you add on top of that the record of all the subconscious mistakes, forget it. Those are the mistakes we don't even remember. How many you and, you and I have made on this blessed day of Jum'ah from the morning till now? There's no count. Really, of the af'al that we've a line of mistakes we've made among the af'al. So that's the mercy of Allah Azza wa Now, after Allah mentions this, He makes human beings realize they're not going to be held to account just for anything they did. They're going to be really held to account for things that they did, that they were truly responsible and conscious for. Now the conversation begins about how people are going to be taken to paradise or towards hellfire. It's famous passage. وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَىٰ جَهَنَّمَ زُمَرًا then Allah says, those who disbelieve, Allahumma la taj'ala minhum, they are going to be herded. Siqa. Saqa yani, in a, susiqa yani ukhida. They were taken and they were moved quickly. They were herded. When you move somebody quickly along, then that's called saqa yasuqo. Nowadays in modern Arabic, it's used even for driving a car. But back in the day, yani yasuqo jamalan ala sabil al-mithal. They say when you're herding a camel and you're making the camel run, not just walk, run, then this is this is siyah. Okay, or so even. So Allah says the people of the, the people of disbelief are not just going to be slowly walked towards Jahannam. They are going to be rushed towards Jahannam. Nobody wants to go towards Jahannam. People don't, their feet don't want to move. They want to stay back. You, can you imagine a guy being dragged literally? But that dragging you usually think is very slow. Come on, get over here, get over here. And he's pulling back and you're dragging him. But no, these angels are very strong. They're just going to be dragged very, very quickly. And then Zulam, they're going to be dragged into all kinds of groups. They're going to be broken up into categories and groups. Use that own other place in the Quran Allah describes. There are groups and categories and you know sections of Kufar. These are the people that lied against messengers. Those are the people of riba. Those are the people of shirk. Those are the people that didn't think there was a difference between al halal and haram. These are the people of nifat. Allahumma la tajalla minhum. There are categories of people. People of shamelessness. You know, people of corruption. People that ate people's money. They, people that killed innocent people. These are corrupt government officials. There's a whole category just for them. You know, that, that, that sucked the blood of the people. There are going to be categories for people and each of them are being dragged by their category. Zuman. Then Allah says, Hatta idha ja'uha. Until the very moment that they have come upon. Come, up, come upon Jahannam. They're being dragged quickly towards Jahannam and you can imagine Jahannam, this colossal prison. And you've reached the gate of the prison. In the previous surah you already learned something about the gates of Jannah. What did you learn? That the gates are being left? Open. Now you learn. 
hatta idha ja'uha until the very point that they come upon jahannam futihat abwabuha then its doors are opened it's jawab al-shaw idha the when and then statement when they get there then the doors are open they're not open before that not until the kafir reaches the gate then Allah opens the gate to Jahannam. Now there's a couple of things before, let's go back to the gate of Jannah for a second before we get here. When I was talking about the gate of Jannah and I told you the, do the door is left open, I said there are no formalities in your own home, right? yes? But we are also at the same time as it's home, it's the home of our ancestors, so we're going to be treated like guests. We're going to be treated like guests also in our own home. You know, when you throw a, 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 a party, and you invite people to your house. Obviously you live in London, so you have to be careful when you invite people to your house. I'm sure you don't leave the door open. But, imagine that you live, you know, in the, in the situation, you're, you're inviting somebody and you're really waiting for them to come. Somebody important you invited, somebody you really love and you miss is coming. And you can't wait for them to come. You know what you do? Not only do you leave the door open, you stand by the door for them to come. Because you don't want them to come. At, right? When I was giving this a similar khutbah in Texas, I said, man, it's hot out there. You don't want your guests to stand outside and burn, but I can't use that here. It's cold out there. It's snowing. It's raining. You don't want your guests to stand, stand out there and ring the bell or knock on the door and wait for you to get out of the kitchen and to the door. No, no, no. You stand by the door waiting for them to come. And this is actually an expression of love and hospitality, <laughs> that the door is being left open for the guests. They don't even have to knock. They don't even have to watch. And by the way, a believer, if the door was just open, if the door was just open, a believer, until he asks permission, he can't go in. But if the, if the host is at the door, saying, come on in, come on in, come on in, then he goes in. So Allah didn't just leave the door open. He has the door being held open. So the guests, the, 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 the inviters, are there to say salam to you and say, come on in. SubhanAllah. And on the other side, you've got Jahannam. And the gates are closed until the people who deserve to be there finally get to the gate. And at that moment, Futihat Abwabullah. Then the doors are open. They're not open before that. And you know, this Jahannam, I made a parallel between Jahannam and prison. In prison. It's a really bad idea to leave prison gates open. It's a really bad idea. You only see prison gates open when a criminal is about to be taken in, or somebody is about to be taken out, oh, that's it. And it's open for those few seconds, and it closes again. It locks up again. And that's the image of the people of Hellfire. That's how they are going to be treated. I am not, this khutbah is not about Hellfire, by the way. But I just want to make a comparison. If this khutbah was about Hellfire, I would share with you that the people that are being dragged towards the Hellfire, even before they get there, even though they're being taken very, very quickly, you know, when he sees it, Outside, he sees it, sees hellfire from a distance. He says, He calls from a distance, just please kill me now. Thubura, immediate death, please. Execution, please. No prison time, just kill me now, kill me now, kill me now. Then he will be taken. Then thrown inside. He's wishing for death already. From who? From the same guardian angels that are pushing him, that are taking him towards the gate. Allahumma la taj'alna min ashab al now, as they are taken inside, وَقَالَ لَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا And the guardians, the, you know, the, the vault keepers of Jannah, are now talking to these prisoners as they're walking in. And they say to them, لَا حَوْلَ وَلَا إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ رُسُلُونَ مِنْكُمْ No messengers among you came to you? You didn't get any messengers? When we're shocked. We, we thought these gates should remain closed. Who would be stupid enough to end up in Jahannam? There were so many messengers sent. You didn't get any? Alam yatikum rusulun minkum yaduna alikum ayatin da ayatin rabbikum that were reading on to you the miraculous revelations, the miraculous signs of your master. Quran was being read on to you, wasn't it? You weren't among the people. Torah was being read on to you. You were in the time of Musa alayhi salam. You were in the time of Zakaria alayhi salam. You were in the time of Isa alayhi salam. You, you didn't get messages? Why are you here? What, what would have to be wrong with you? Why weren't you using your intellect? And that is the exact words we're going to find in Surah Al-Mulk. That's the response to this. They're going to say if we were only listening. If we only listened. Young brothers, sometimes you sit in a khutbah. 
and the khutbah is with an accent, or the khutbah is quoting a hadith or an ayah, and you're like, oh God, I've already heard this before. Oh God. And you start playing with your phone. How do I hear this, man? I heard this already. And a day will come, a person will be dragged into the hellfire, he's going to say, if only I listen. If only I listen. We don't come to the khutbah to be entertained, folks. We don't, we don't come here to be entertained. We come here to listen. That's what, what this is for. And there will be people that are being taken into the hellfire that are crying, if only we listen. If only we listen. So if there's a once a week opportunity for you to listen, give it some respect. Come early and listen. Come early and just give any, every, atten every bit of attention you can to listen. Now they say, if we were, you know, weren't, weren't messengers coming to you? Weren't they reading miraculous signs of your master unto you? Weren't they constantly reminding you of the meaning of this day? Wasn't that the case with you? And what did they say? They said, yeah, actually, quite right. That is the case, of course. No doubt about it. We heard that a lot. Oh my God, they talk, they talk about the Akhirah? They talk about the Day of Judgment? I heard that all the time. And I got so used to it that it doesn't even do anything for me anymore. I was like, man, when are they going to change the subject? When are they going to talk about something else? That's why the Mubara is used. They're consistently warning you about the meaning of this day. And you know what? I don't mind the khutbah being over and over and over again about the Akhirah. I don't mind it. You know why? Because we don't have enough reminder of the Akhirah in our lives. We really don't. We're immersed in dunya way too much. And second of all, the Qur'an makes it a priority. If you're reading the Qur'an from one end to the other, the thing that will come up the most is the Akhirah. It just doesn't leave, let you go. There's no page that lets it go. There's nothing that, there's, there's not a time, a moment in the Qur'an that, that Allah lets you forget about the Akhirah. So how can we be, like, I already know this, thank you. I already know, Day of Judgment, Heaven, Hell, I got it. Can we move on to something else now? Like you're already, you're already, already ready for it. You and I are not ready. May Allah Azza wa make us of those that are ready. Now, وَلَكِنْ حَقَّتْ كَلِمَةُ الْعَذَابَ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ But the word of punishment has manifested, it's become materialized, and it's worth, it's worthy of those who disbelieve. Now let's turn to the people of Jannah. Actually, before we go, قِيلَ بْخُلُوا أَبْوَابَ جَهَنَّمَ It is said to them, this qila is also important. Because the word qila in the Arabic language, the majhul, al mabni ala al majhul, al fa'il lam yudkar. The, the subject isn't mentioned. Allah doesn't say, Allah will say, enter the gates of Jahannam. No. It will be said. It was said. The speaker isn't mentioned. One of the benefits of that is it's not just one. It's multiple guardians, multiple angels, the ones that were pushing also. They're all saying, enter the gates of Jahannam. There's, you know, I told you to remember two things from the previous surah. And one of them was, the, you know, one of them was the gate being held open. And the other was the argument of the angels. There's a third thing that if, it's on a side note. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in the previous surah of people of Jahannam, muqtaham, muqtaham. What that means is they are piled on top of each other. People of Jahannam are piled on top of each other. And he doesn't explain there what, what that means. Why, how are they piled on top of each other? What, is that, what in the world does that mean? Why are they making a mount, mountain of people? All he tells us there is, there's already a group of people, they're already crammed, there's no space left for them, and a new batch of people is being thrown in, and they, when, he, when he looks at them, when the people are already inside look at them, they say, La marhaban bihim, there's no space for them, they're not welcome here. كَمَا نَقُولْ هَذِي لَيَّامِ مَرْحَبًا La marhaban bihim, they're not welcome here. We got no space, we already got problems enough. Tell them to go back. And the guys from above say, no, la marhaban bikum. You people, you're not welcome. You're the reason we got here. They're blaming each other. They got the, new, the newcomers into Jahannam are blaming the people that are already in Jahannam. Why is that happening? In this ayah, Allah Azza wa gives us a hint. He says, Mathwa. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fabiqsa Mathwa al Mutakabiri. Mathwa is a place where you live and the previous generation before you lived and the previous generation before you lived. Like if you're living in a house where your father, your grandfather, your great-grandfather, his great-grandfather lived, then that place is your matwa. 
And in, the, in Jahannam, it will form a, a kind of matwa, where the people of Kufr, who passed it down to their kids, who passed it down to their kids, who passed it down to their kids, are being piled one on top of the other, the next generation, the next generation, the next generation. Of all the people, Allah doesn't call them disbelievers now, He calls them the people of arrogance and mutakabbirin. These are people that are full of themselves. These people had it all figured out. They don't need anybody's advice. They don't need any guidance. You know, at the, at the, the very beginnings of our, our, our deen, are you have to be humble enough to take advice. Because we take advice from Allah. We take advice from His Messenger wasallam, And we're willing to say to ourselves, I don't know better. They know better. Allah and His Messenger know better. So whatever they say, I'm going to take it. And I'm not going to argue against it. It's a level of humility. But the people of Kufr, yeah, thanks for the advice, but I already have better advice for myself. I've got it figured out for myself. Now we turn to Jannah very, very quickly. And then those who had taqwa of their master are going to be rushed quickly to Jannah. Now why are they being rushed quickly? They already want to move quickly. But maybe their ability to run and move isn't good enough. So the angels expedite them on the express track and take them even faster. You and I know the scenes of judgment, they are horrifying. And, be, and believers can't wait to get into Jannah. They can't wait to get there. And it's a long walk. Allah Azza wa Jalla will describe in different surahs of Quran, you know, يَسْعَى نُورُهُمْ بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَبِأَيْمَانِهِمْ Light will come out of their chest. Light will come out of their right hand. May Allah make, make us from them. And that light will allow them to walk through the mountains <coughs> towards Jannah. But you're walking slowly. Allah says, no, I'll give you a legion of angels that will aid you and rush you quickly to, through this mess. So as you're asking Allah, Rabbana atmim lana nurana, Allah complete our life, on top of that Allah is rushing you through the horror, through the difficult times, so you can get to the gates quickly. So now that you get to the gates, remember when the people of Jahannam were taken to the gates, then the gate were open, but Allah Azza wa says miraculously, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرَا حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا وَفُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا لَمْ يَقُلْ فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا قَالْ وَفُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا وَأَوْحَالِيَا نَقُولْ هُنَا While the gates were already open. Until they got to it, while the gates were already open. He doesn't say until they got to it, then the gates were open. The gates were already open. The gates were already in that state. So they can rush through quickly. So they don't have to wait outside. Because waiting outside is to be, still be in, in the, in the hashr. In the gathering, in the place where there's turmoil, you're not in safety yet. They're taken quickly inside into Jannah. May Allah Azza wa make all of us from them that are taken quickly inside this paradise. And the guardians of Jannah, the paradise, are speaking to these people that are being rushed into Jannah, saying, Salamu alaykum. I don't have to translate that for you. You know, Salam Sahab. Aap bhi aagay, mashallah. Aayye aayye. Enter in, come on in. Salamu alaikum, tibtum. How good you people are. Wow, looking good. This is good stuff. They're complimenting you. There's some nice people coming through. Angels are giving you compliments. As you're walking in, tibtum. Fadhuluha khalidin. And enter it to stay forever. Because once you go in, you're like, you know, when you go to an expensive place, you're like, I'm only here for one night. Or you go to a large catering hall, you're like, I, you know, it's going to be only for two hours. Then you got to get out of here because they're going to close the doors or whatever. You know, or you, you know, and if you're in, a, in an expensive hotel or a, a resort or something, how long is it going to last? So the angels are assuring you, listen, I know this is nice, but it's yours. Stay here forever. Don't, don't think it's not for you. Don't think it's too above your class. No, this is you. This is all you. You people deserve it. You're good people. You deserve it. We already knew. I mean, how many times have you recited Khalidina Fiha, Khalidina Fiha? Then, then you'll experience Khalidina Fiha. Then you'll taste what Khalidin Abiha means. And as we enter in, now they say, Qalu Alhamdulillah. Then they'll say, Alhamdulillah. Now you and I say Alhamdulillah all the time, don't we? But that Alhamdulillah is different. It's different. We say Alhamdulillah, you know, there's, you come out of the house and it's not freezing weather. And you're like, oh, Alhamdulillah, good, good, good day. You know, you're looking for your keys, you're getting late to work and you find it under your pillow. Alhamdulillah, okay, okay. But when you walk into Jannah, and you look around, and then you just can't even help yourself, and the words come out, Alhamdulillah, it's going to be different. 
is going to be different. These words are very powerful. By putting Alhamdulillah here, you know what Allah has done? Every time you say Alhamdulillah for now, if you can remember, remind yourself of the Alhamdulillah you will say when you walk into Jannah. Just remind yourself of that. This Alhamdulillah is that, is that cheap, it's a gift from Jannah. These are words that you will be saying and I will be saying in Jannah. Alhamdulillah. And then he says, Alhamdulillah illadhi. This is These are our words in the future. Alladhi sadaqana wa'dahu. The one who was true to his promise to us. I know I'm over my time, I'll take just a couple more minutes inshallah. Wa awratan al ard. And he let us inherit the earth. What beautiful language, Wallahi. He let us inherit the earth. He gave us the earth in inheritance, the earth of Jannah, in inheritance. What in the world does that mean? We already learned before. Husna ma'ab, a wonderful place to go back to. Who are we inheriting it from? Our father who was created for Jannah. Inna dunya khuliqat lakum wa antum khuliqtum lil akhirati. The dunya was created for you, but you were created for the akhirah. So finally we get to inherit the land that we were supposed to have, the earth we were supposed to have. But there are so many of us going into Jannah, and it's so huge. Where's my address? Where, I mean, I'm trying to find my house. Because you know you pass by a lot of mansions, a lot of gardens. Which one's mine? You don't want to enter into somebody else's. The, the, these people of Jannah say, نَتَبَوَّأُ فِيهَا نَتَبَوَّأُ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ حَيْثُ نَشَاءُ we get to move into Jannah wherever we want. Tabawwa means to move wherever, the, finding the right place. Yeah, there's good schools in this area. The neighborhood is nice. The real estate price is good. The neighbors are decent. Let me check everything before I pick my house. You'll get to pick. You'll get to pick. You don't have to say, what's my address? You say, which one should be my address? Let me pick. We get to pick wherever we want to be in Jannah and make that our home. What an incredible scene. What a different taste of Alhamdulillah. What an amazing compensation for those who put themselves to work. Remember, the passage ends with Amal. What an amazing compensation for people who put themselves to work. Now, the last bit I want to share with you. You see, in, at the end of the surah, that argument that the angels had that I made reference to, is resolved. Whatever that argument was about the human beings, who will go where? Are these people going to be guided? How is Allah's mercy going to manifest? How is it all going to go down? At the end of it all, وَتَرَى الْمَلَائِكَ حَافِينَ مِنْ حَوْلِ العرش. You will see the angels surrounding, going around, the, all around the arsh. يُسَبِّحُونَ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ They're even doing the hum and declaring Allah's perfection. وَقُضِيَ بَيْنَهُمْ بِالْحَقِّ And even their decision will have been made. Even their argument is resolved. In the previous surah, Allah said they're having an argument. Now He says, وَقُضِيَ بَيْنَهُمْ بِالْحَقِّ And even their arguments will have been resolved. And all the results are in. Whether they thought what was right or wrong, all of the results are in. And when they see the final results, what do they say? وَقِيلَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ And then it will be said, الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ is the beginning of our guidance. And it will be said, it will resound in Jannah through the angels and the believers who are walking in. Forever and ever we're going to hear, الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ this is, this is the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jalla. This is the gift Allah is giving us in this beautiful, beautiful passage. The last bit I want to share with you before I let you go, inshallah ta'ala, is as we walk into Jannah, in this passage particularly, Allah told us we say Alhamdulillah, yes? In another place, Allah Azza wa Jalla also tells us, Alhamdulillah, alladhi hadana li hada, li hada. All praise, all gratitude belongs to Allah who guided us all the way, li, lil ghaya, all the way to this. You get into Jannah, and you see this incredible reward, this ajr from Allah, and you say, now I understand what guidance means. Guidance was this, this journey Allah walked us through in dunya, then we come out of our graves on judgment day, and Allah guides us, because it's an incredibly difficult path from out of your grave into, the, into Jannah. It's a difficult journey, and that journey needs guidance, it needs a sat-nav. You call it sat-nav here, huh? We call it GPS, right? And so He guides all the way to the end, وَقِيلَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ And الحمد لله رب العالمين will be said. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن الحكيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات وذكر الحكيم Move up as much as you possibly can. Zakum Allah.
الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وقاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله رحمكم الله اتقوا الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتاب موقوتا as a homework assignment when you go home إن شاء الله تعالى read the end of سورة الزمر for yourselves and with your family. Amen.